folks, I'm Anthony with Anthony's Comic Book Art, and today we're coming to you from the comic book store that I own and uh, sometimes run with my friend Charles Vieira. Now, Charles is an accomplished artist. He's a, he's a showing artist, right, you'd yeah. say it? Exhibited. Exhibiting yeah. artist right. and uh, with his own personal work. But I know him from his collecting of comic art and uh, how comic art has influenced his own personal art and his, uh, uh, you know, museum quality pieces that you produce. Right, Charles? That's right. That's right. I mean, so, yeah, go I, ahead. You know, I, I'm mostly into fine arts, but like probably the majority of male fine artists that I know, they started with their interest in comic books. So, so many of them, when they were kids, they said, oh, I, I fell in love with drawing by watching comic books or reading comic books. So, I'm one of those people, too. And... Yeah. Uh, you know, like Anthony says, I've, I've exhibited my work at places like the Brooklyn Museum and Nassau County Museum, but I've always had this love for, for comics, and uh, it's kind of seeped into my artwork mm -hmm. in very subtle ways. I want to show an example of uh, how much I appreciate Charles' work and why, you know, I have him here today. This is my side of the bed at my home, and he had a couple pieces that I uh, related to as me as the rooster, and then my wife as the hen with the three chicks, representing my three sons. Right next to it is a piece I did, but you can't see it, actually. When I was trying to be artistic in that respect, I uh, did a... Well, you were I a first-rate photographer. Yeah, yeah, well, I was a visual artist, yeah. I like to say. Uh, but before then, before I owned a camera, I was painting and... I, I lived in Europe for two years, and I used to hang out at all the national museums in Milan and Vienna and Paris, and you know. So I, I loved being around, uh, having access to you know those museums and and Florence, you know, uh, see all the Botticelli masterpieces, mm -hmm. Birth of Venus, mm -hmm. you know, the, the Michelangelo's David. David, do you say David or David? David. Yeah, David. David. You know his uh, yeah. archetypal male sculptor, yeah. sculpture. Well, I and always like those. You know, uh, Nicholas Poussin, Caravaggio, all those figure street, you know, scenes with the, you know, physical anatomy stuff going on, and uh, you know, it kind of seeped into my work with that also. Okay, so it. you this is. Uh, this is a piece that you wanted to talk about, uh, and and you have wanted to talk about your, your how comic books influenced it. Yeah, this is something called uh, Heroes of the Western World, and um, I did it because one, I, just thinking about the media and how they portray, especially Western media. You know, the hero has to be a male tough guy. Uh, the, the female has to be an over-sexualized uh, female, and there doesn't seem, at least in the early days, that's, that's kind of changing now, but in the early days, uh, it was pretty much the way it was, and, and, it, and it still is kind of seeps into our culture. So I actually, um, because I love comics so much, I borrowed some, some um, uh, poses from uh, Kirby uh, for those, those guys that were fighting in the front. And uh, the women in the back, uh, I actually uh, uh, borrowed some uh, poses, again, uh, from Elfgren, some of the women that he had, because those are two artists that I really admire. Um, and, you know, I've done a series of paintings that are, you'll see with the other one that we're going to show. I always put the women in color, um, and the rest of the, not always, but in this little series of, uh, that, that I did, the women are in color, because, frankly, the women bring color into our lives, and right. Anthony would contest to that. I was thinking about that on the way in. That you know, I watch a lot of your podcasts, and they're okay. And Anthony's telling these jokes, and they're kind of, you know, getting modest response. And then Sharon shows up, <laughs> and the whole place just lights up. And that's pretty yeah. much what women do. They they light up our dreary male lives, and so. You know, uh, I like to put them in color and, uh, at least on this painting, uh, portray the men in black and white. All right. Well, thank you for that. Uh, yeah. th those complimentary... Uh... Speaking of Sharon, she's calling me. Oh. Well, you know, I wanted to talk about that in a way that, you know, 
Uh, my acceptance of people everywhere is just you just can't help who you fall in love with. And, you know, and my wife is a testament to that. Now, these are these are fun. You have you have the dog walking, a couple of dog walkers. Yeah, I mean, there's a narrative to that, too. I mean, one of the kind of playful things that I kid around with my wife is that she keeps me on a short leash. Who's a lovely, lovely woman yes. that you really uh, I got overachieved as well. Above my pay scale, as some people say. Um, and I always kid about her keeping me on a short leash. And I've done a couple of paintings that really have women walking dogs. And, and the, uh, the dog tends to be the, um, the symbol of the male and, and the women. And um, you so know, take, sometimes you take a dog for a walk, and sometimes the dog walks you. Sometimes, and, right. That's and an sometimes old, you keep. <laughs> that's an old gambling that, expression, that, that, actually. <laughs> Uh, you know, from uh, uh, that old gamblers the that, that uh, when they're chasing their, you know, money uh, in a, in a, a game, uh -huh. you know, sometimes you're walking the dog and sometimes the dog walks you, uh -huh. meaning your, your gambling sickness is uh -huh. like making you chase money. It's a, that's what that means. Oh, okay. So that's funny. Well, that part of it, you know, I didn't really consider, but that, um, that idea of being on a leash, I, 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 it, it sometimes it seems a bit derogatory that, you know, that someone would be leading someone on a leash. But just considering walking the dog, you keep the dog safe by walking the dog on the leash. Uh, and it's nice to have somebody who cares about you, that cares enough to put you on the leash to make sure that you don't veer out into the traffic. And, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I think you can... So, so now, what's similar about these two paintings? Uh, I see what it is. Do you want me to the the women are in color and the dogs are in black and white. The women are in color and the so dogs. So the women are in color and the dogs are in black and white here yeah, too. The life is in black and white without those beautiful women. And um, you know, then shoes. Are my shoes, yeah, shoes, lights. yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, these are they are intentionally sexualized. Elvgren sort of sexualized. I mean, not overtly right. sexualized, but I've, I had, a, I was showing this uh, somewhere, and some woman who came in, she goes, "Oh, women don't, women don't walk dogs with those kinds of sh heels." I said, "Well, you know, I live out in Jersey, but I've seen it in Manhattan plenty of times, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so they were, I mean, they were intentionally short skirts because, and again, if we aren't going to equate the male with the dog, he is being led around by his sexuality, and so." That, that's that's not such a subtle statement that I'm putting there. So, and I did several of those, and I actually made them into uh, a series of, of uh, pastel drawings, which are mm -hmm. actually different. Well, this types, is I'm really impressed with. Yeah, the pastels is, yeah. is are my chickens? Uh, that's kind of mixed. Your chicken right? was pastels. No, it may have right. Yeah, the chickens were pastels. I wow. think your first, I was trying to remember how you even saw that rooster, but you were at the house one day. No, I came over to do an art deal with yeah, you. Yeah, and you saw the yeah. rooster there, and you really I think we were trying right to... off my wall, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we have similar taste in art, and you've always had some good Basema stuff, and and uh, Kirby, and, and uh, you know, I'm always trying to do deals uh, when I see you, when you bring in stuff to the trade or, or buy, and... Uh, you know that's 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 how we got to know each other, and you know I I I, I like art for art's sake, you know, and the, the stuff that I like looking at, and you know, this is uh, I just like I like this one the best out of all of these, really, yeah. because you know you got one dog going one way and you got one dog going the other way, and you know it's just pastels is that's a it's a real um, fitting medium for for the piece yeah. i like it and i take i actually take a shortcut with these i have about four of these which are different combinations of women's legs and dogs and i developed a, a sort of a uh, a quick way of composing them where i take uh what we used to call acetate but which is a very thin uh sort of plastic mm -hmm. and i draw the legs on them and then i draw two or three sh shapes of dogs and then I take and I buy some really good paper and I go down to Staples and I run the colored paper through on, when I put the, the, clear, um, the clear acetate uh, drawing of the dog on the top and then I print it 
and then I'll put the legs on and I'll print it and, the, and I'll do different combinations of dogs and legs. And then the standard dog shape can be, you know, made into a beagle or made into a golden retriever or whatever, you know, I think is working mm -hmm. best at the time. And the legs, you know, shoes, shoes are a lot of fun. Um, well, you know, I think I want to commission you to do a uh, 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 Sharon's legs with our uh, our poodle. You give me a picture <laughs> of the poodle, and you tell Sharon yeah. to give me a picture of her favorite shoes, and I will put the poodle and the shoes in the picture. Right. And uh, I'll just ad lib the legs. So yeah, we love our poodle. Yes. Uh, she uh, she's getting older. She just went. Uh, Having trouble seeing if she's not completely blind. So what's her name? Uh, Josie. I had a childhood dog uh, from my that my mom got when we were, I was like four years old. And I, that's my earliest memory is like mm -hmm. getting that dog as a puppy, and uh, my mom had a grandmother that was completely French, and she was Joan Marie. So she always liked French stuff and wanted me to take French in school, and uh -huh. she got a French poodle because you know, they have hair instead of fur. So that's that's my dog origin Does story. Does the dog shed? No, 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 it has hair. Like you and me. Yeah. Like well, hair. Like you. Hair. Well, <laughs> no, so they don't have fur. Poodles are, and you know, that's why they're hyperallergenic and don't have any dander. Uh -huh. So it, uh, it was, you know, it's very clean animal, very clean animal. And, they, and you know, she wants to be clean. So, uh, you know, she's always cheered up when she gets a bath and a grooming and stuff like that. So that's a great, great, uh, been a great member of our family. So that yeah. that's something you got out of this this uh, this uh, <laughs> interview right now. We is love that, our dogs. You know, you know, I've decided privately that uh, when I meet people, if they don't like dogs, I don't really know if I want to be around them. <laughs> I love people who love dogs. Yeah. Um, so, those, so when you display these, did you do these as a series in the, in the display? Yeah, this was the first one. This yeah. was the idea. And then, you know, the the next ones I didn't do, the just women in color. Um, because frankly, I've, I've found, in just, you know, as I market my paintings around, even though I love black and white, and this references back to, the, to, to my love for original comic art, I just love the abbreviation that, and the, and the, and the economy of, 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 of drawing that, that goes in black and white. They, it, and I love black and white. It, 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 I, I would prefer to have a black and white original art page than a color page. I just I just love the way the mm -hmm. artists make that all work. And you don't, it's like when you're watching a black and white movie, after a while you don't even realize it's black and white anymore. You're seeing these Well, the craftsmanship of the old black yeah. and white studio movies is amazing. And, on, you know, they have specials on on the on the uh, classic movie channel, uh, you know, film noir, just you know, just as far as yeah. as uh, getting everything together. But so what I wanted to add to that was like, as I market my stuff, I find that the black and white things, paintings and drawings, really don't go that well. People, people want color. Yeah, they want they want color. Well, they want so that's decorative right. art. I yeah. mean, you know, they want something they want to look at on a daily basis, and, and this is more decorative. You can put this up, a dog lover can put that up. Yeah. This is a different story. You're telling a story here, and that's like, you have to get that story. I mean, that this is fun because this, this is a piece that, uh, it's in black and white. It's, uh, but... Central Park. It's in Central Park. And you have these classic, like, flying saucers that are taking the girl up, but she's more of a, a modern dress, and, and she's wearing rollerblades, not roller skates, so it's very modern in that respect. So you got kind of a juxtaposition there, right? Mm -hmm. I think the black, you know, what was it, Marshall McLuhan said that when you see things in black and white in the newspaper, it somehow it makes it more important. And so I think I was kind of feeding on that when the black and white, that there are a lot of paintings like those there right, that I do with the women are in color, but I did a whole series of black and whites, just black and white, um, mostly because of reasons I just stated, but mostly also because it's very fast. I mean, I squeeze out a, a, a blob of titanium white, I squeeze out a blob of ivory black, and I'm on my way. And there's some, you know, there's all these little middle tones of grays that come in between, but it's a, it's a very fast mm -hmm. process and. Uh, it, to me, it, it, it's effective. And um, uh, as far as my business is concerned, it's like I have, you know, the the 
regular comic art that's drawn as line art, uh, you know, open line art to be colored, and then you have that whole 70s, you know, dominated by the Filipinos that were just a black and white, uh, you know, fully tonal art. Right. You know, one of those pages I sold at uh, the Sunday uh, show where uh, by Gonzalo Mayo, like what a great artist and what a great guy that like, you know, that's 100 percent finished black and white tomor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were doing that for the magazines. And I guess they, they weren't. Stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's so it's really undervalued and under underappreciated about how much work went into that and that they're. They're doing a finished picture, picture, you know, that's one artist doing that, you know, and not not a pencil or an anchor and a colorist to make right. it finished. It's like, oh, this is all by that one guy doing that, doing the full tone I, I just picked up a, an Earl Norm uh, uh, illustration from a men's magazine. It was all black and white. Mm -hmm. was yeah, I have, I have, I've had a lot of those, yeah. Like, and they're, they're usually in this kind of style where, right. you know, no. Gene Colin too. I mean, Gene Colin, Colin did the uh, uh, mail magazine stuff. No, no, no. But, but just someone who uses black and white, who uses, you know, uh, massive. Yeah, Gene, Gene kind of crossed over that line a little bit, and a lot of like the Dracula stuff, and like you, you can look at those pages, and you're know, like, like, are they really meant to be colored? But like most yeah. of them were, <laughs> most of them uh, were at night. And, you know, because it was Dracula, he only came out at night, right? Uh -huh. So, like, that whole series is basically at night, uh -huh. you know, and, and the, the tone, again, it's like a black and white movie, you know, a film noir that uh, you appreciate. Uh, I was just talking to a collector yesterday and when I was doing a deal with him, and he's like, oh, I'm just all about Colin Dracula pages and getting good Colin Dracula pages. And I understand why. There's, there's, uh, there's that appeal to it, that film noir aspect to it. Yeah. You know, the more you you, you, you reduce an artist's uh, arsenal of, of materials, the more they have to, you know, lend themselves and you really can gauge their talent. You know, there's no uh, gloss, there's no uh, sequins, there's no color, there's no, you know, you, you know, you, you hand an artist just a pencil and a piece of paper. And that really, I mean, you can get a real testament to, to, you know, to how talented that artist is. And so, you know, that's why I think I'm always drawn to comic book art because it's usually at, at seeds of its creation of just black and white. And boy, you know, some of the stuff that these people can do, some of these artists, it just you know, not blows away. So have you been productive during the, the lockdown type? Actually, I have. I have. I've, done, I've taken a lot of... Um, during the lockdown, I, I decided to take some of my uh, images that I had around and, and just abstract them. And I did a, about 21 paintings in the wow. last three months for abstractions. You know, they just I'll take a... I, I, well, I, you know, I did, do you I have did, a show I, lined up or a venue lined up? To, I had a show, that? you know, I live near Princeton and I had a show uh, in uh, uh, the Nassau House, which is like the... Uh, it's like the faculty, um, what do you call venue it? The faculty the, venue for Princeton University. For the art yeah, uh, for, side? You know, they have a bar there. They have a, they actually have an original Norman Rockwell up on the walls. So it's, it's really- They probably gave them- Yeah, yeah. I mean, 60, just, yeah. 70 years ago, right? And that got wiped away. I mean, it's just, now it's, you know, probably, I think everybody who's oh, yeah. exhibiting, we're just kind of, See which when, venues are open, you know, the gallery. when they open back up. Yeah. Well, hopefully with the vaccine happening that uh, we'll be able to uh, start showing and being more, uh, you know, out and about in the next few weeks. Uh, I like this one. We have a, we actually. This I like this one. I this teach at fun. the Arts Council of Princeton. There's a, a members exhibition going on now. It's the first time we've allowed people to come back into the building. Um, so there's stuff going on, but very. So what kind of price points are we talking about on your stuff here? Uh, what I would just like to the, get, or what I really general. get? Yeah. <laughs> well, in general, the large one. I mean, large things are hard to place, especially personal paintings like this. You know, you have to be a certain type of person to want uh, men fighting on the street with birds flying around and elfin. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's like a three thousand dollar painting. 
Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I still own it, so maybe, <laughs> maybe I have to assess that view. But um, you know, take like I say, you have to. It's much easier to play smaller pieces. Yeah, like um, the pastel, the yeah. difference. Well, what is this acrylics? Yeah, this is like this goes between four and six fifty or something like that. I think I've had it for. I may even have the price on that from the last show. Yeah. And did you value your pastels more? No, the pastels are less. The oh, pastels, less? Really? Pastels are less. Yeah, they're smaller. They're faster to do. I, I crack those out in, in a short amount of time. So that See, that's weird to me because I think uh, the, the actual uh, technique and the, uh, of pastels is harder. No? Um, For some people, maybe? You know? Know, it doesn't make sense. I mean, that's just the way it's always been. Drawings are less than paintings. Um, it's, that's just the way it's always okay. been. Well, well, it's it's that's weird to me. I do I do I mean this is a much smaller. So if this is a six hundred dollar uh, painting, then this is a three seventy five four hundred dollar drawing. You know. okay. I, I don't I don't. And what about this girl? Can uh, you make her more like Sharon? Can you go in and make her more like Sharon? <laughs> when she was twenty years old in New York, when I uh, when I brought her up to from North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah, we used to be on skates together. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this is like, for you, I would probably do $400. For anybody else, I'd probably want over five, mm -hmm. maybe five and a half, something like that. And there's something you want in trade on uh, on that from the um, from the store? Actually, there is something that I wanted. All right, well, we got a deal then. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you came in, you got to talk about your art and make a deal. Yeah. And uh, I want... I want something like and get a commission because I want something like this with the with uh, my wife and uh, my Same dog. Same size? Same yeah, size. that's yeah. I, that's a good size. Give me a picture. Well, I guess I can find a. Uh, if I'll, I'll send you if pictures. Yours is a I'll give you a reference. Breed. I can just look it up and see what that breed She's is. She's a beautiful yeah. miniature poodle. That, now let me you ask know. you. So, would you like a second dog in that picture? Or you just. No, I mean, do you just want one leg, one set of legs, and. One set of dogs, because usually yeah. I'm well, used to, to create a whole scene. I don't even like poodles. Like when the well, when the big poodles. standard black poodle won the dog show, we were jumping <laughs> out of our seats. No, we are really. And then that what was funny is, uh, well, fun for us is that the the sire Josie's sire was a a a nationally ranked show dog, and his hand her yeah his handler. Is a Korean guy, and he's like the poodle handler uh -huh. of the in the country, and uh, so he was actually in the dog show, and he showed the miniature poodle, and then in the last one he showed the toy poodle, so we have that kind of uh, connection I to the to show. I wanted to show you a picture of my dog, but I couldn't pull it up. But that's uh, all right. How about how about we put two poodles? We put a black one and. Um, I don't know. You have to. Have two. Oh, we'll talk about it yeah, later. One or two. But the, you know, this is you been, by the poodle. This has been uh, fun, uh, you know. And uh, as far as uh, talking to a collector and getting uh, your your origin story, you know, like Bill does on on his channel, and uh, we'll 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 uh, we'll maybe try to do some more things like this. And when he does, uh, when you do your commission for me, we'll have you back and showing okay, that. Love that would be back. awesome. Oh, it was great to see you. So uh, this is Charles Vieira. He's an artist and an art collector. Can I mention my website? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. CharlesDavidVieira.com. David, middle name. I always like to use that. It sounds classy. Well, you stay classy, Charles yeah, Vieira. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, that's that's uh, that's our interview with uh, Charles and uh, you know his uh, expressions of in the way he expresses himself through his artwork, and I, I dig it because you know this is this is uh, an artist that was you know influenced by comic art and you know you know became your career. It's, yeah, you know I mean, because, because not... my origins of you know being influenced by the visual art. Of comic books led to my photography career, where I was, uh, you know, doing advertising for, uh, and making, you know, those images come, producing those images for advertising, and uh, so that's kind of a similar thing. You know, I mostly I mostly supported myself in teaching, you know, teaching, taught Parsons and Pratt and stuff like that. But I also did a short stint at the Joe Hubert School, 
teaching anatomy right. for one year, and your, I, at least you were, one of your artists, Alex Villeneuve, mm. was he was, was there? Yeah, he was a student of mine uh, for one mm -hmm. semester, um, and then I actually had. And then he left. And then he left. Yeah, <laughs> well, he was he was he was a head and shoulders above all the other students. Yeah, he didn't really correctly. need it. He didn't really need school. Yeah, he didn't. Just and, ask him. Yeah. <laughs> The yeah, best part of teaching there was at lunchtime, all the faculty would get together and Joe would come and sit and have lunch with the faculty and tell war stories, for lack of a better phrase. Well, that was always great. A great war artist. Yeah. <laughs> tell them war stories. Well, thank you for your war stories here, Charles. And uh, I'm Anthony with Anthony's Comic Book Art. And keep calm and keep collecting.